And the next part of the gauge designation is the resistance. This one happens to be 120 ohms. That's a very common question for us, which is what's the right resistance of strain gauge to use? And if we look at 120 ohm gauges first, what we would find is that typically they're going to be smaller in size, they're going to be a little bit lower cost, and oftentimes they're made out of a thicker alloy because the resistance is lower, and that'll lead to a slightly better fatigue life. However, if you look at 350 ohm strain gauges, one of the nice things about it is as that resistance goes up, the current level goes down. So if there's less current, that means there's going to be less heating in the strain gauge. And less heating means that you're going to have less instability. And what all that allows you to do is to increase the bridge voltage proportionally. And the reason that's important is as you increase the bridge voltage, what that allows you to do is have a better signal to noise ratio. Because a Wheatstone bridge, the output's directly proportional. The more input voltage you have, the more output signal you get. So if you go to higher resistance gauges, in general, they allow you to excite them with a higher voltage and still maintain their stability, and therefore you're getting more output out of a Wheatstone bridge. The gauge itself is not any more sensitive. They're virtually the same. But what is different is when you can input more voltage to a Wheatstone bridge, you can get more output signal, and you can get a better signal-to-noise ratio. Additionally, we're always connecting lead wires onto a strain gauge. If you're connecting lead wires that are a foot or two foot long, that may not really matter. But when you start connecting lead wires that are maybe 100 feet or 200 feet long, you really got to watch that ratio between the resistance of the gauge and the resistance of those wires. And a higher resistance gauge will reduce the influence of the lead wire resistance in the measurement. So in general, I'd say anything above about 20 feet, I'd recommend going to 350 ohm strain gauges or maybe even higher. There are some cases where it really makes sense to go to a 1,000 ohm strain gauge and maybe even as high as 5,000 ohms that'll help to reduce or almost eliminate the influence of those wires in a measurement.